Hey guys, what's going on? Michael White here, your favorite developer, and it is a new year. 2022 is upon us, and you guys know what that means. It's time for some new goals. So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the five tools and technologies that I'm gonna be learning this year to both increase my value and my skill set as a web developer. I'm also gonna be including a couple things that no one ever, ever mentions when you're learning web development, like from the beginning. Things that I had to literally find out while I was on the job and kind of learn about thin because nobody ever even mentions them. So if you guys are curious to what those are, stay tuned. Now, keep in mind, this is coming from the perspective of somebody that's been coding for a little over a year now, I guess. And I've been working professionally for about five months. I'm comfortable with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, and Bootstrap. So I know there's an ocean of new technology out there and I'm not gonna be focused on like the cutting edge. I'm going to be more focused on the things that have been around for the last couple years that are growing and that I find useful. And without the way, let's jump into it. Number one is going to be Gatsby. So Gatsby is a React framework that excels at delivering fast static web pages. So a static web page is something that you don't need to update frequently, right? You build it, it's kind of there. You go in, you update it maybe once every couple days or so. Boom, easy to maintain, and it doesn't need to communicate back and forth with the server on a consistent basis. Some good examples of static pages would be like a landing site, a blog, things like that. Now, this is an important skill for me to pick up because, you know, if you want to be a web developer, one of the most basic types of pages you can deliver is a static web page, right? And I've been using Gatsby to build my portfolio out and been having a lot of fun. So we're going to keep rocking with Gatsby this year for static pages. Again, is, is it the best tool for static pages? I don't know, but I'm having fun learning it. Now, Gatsby does have a downside, right? Gatsby is not all that easy to get up and running. It takes, it takes some tinkering. It takes some tutorials. And uh, you got to learn how to use GraphQL if you don't know how to already. So there is a learning curve to Gatsby. But once you get it down, it's really easy. I love their image optimization. And this is something I'm actually really excited about learning moving forward in 2021. Again, as a web developer, you got to be able to deliver good SEO friendly static pages. And Gatsby is the tool to do that. The next technology I'm going to be learning this year is Next.js. So Next.js is a React framework that's better for dynamic sites. These are sites that have a lot of changing data. Think, you know, people commenting, uh, users changing their personal information, things like that, where there's data constantly changing and communicating back and forth with the server. That's where you want to use Next.js. Now, for me, I want to be good at Express and Node, but I'm not. <laughs> the back end is my weakness, okay? So I'm personally using Next.js as like that carrot on a stick to excite me about learning something new. I always get excited when it comes to learning a new technology, but it's also going to be reinforcing my backend skills with Express and Node. Like I've built a few full stack applications, but I'm still very rough around the edges when it comes to that. So I'm mainly using Next.js just to get me excited about learning the backend. <laughs> I have a couple ideas for a project I want to build out into it, but we'll see how that goes. And the next thing I'm going to be learning this year, this is one of those things that nobody ever tells you about. This is one of the things that I didn't find out about until I was literally working in the field as a web developer. And this is SEO and ADA compliance. Everybody wants search engine friendly websites. SEO is search engine optimization. If you build a website for somebody, they're probably gonna check how search engine friendly it is using a tool called Google Lighthouse. Google Lighthouse will scan a web page and give like a grade on how it performs in each search metric, right? So people who own websites, if they don't build it themselves, they're gonna look at that and be like, oh, well, you got a 50 here, so my website sucks, right? So me personally, I think it goes a long way to know how to build with search engine optimization in mind so you get that high score. That's something that people want. That's the key to thriving, right, is to deliver what people want. So when I say SEO, I'm also incorporating things like Google Analytics because I want to be able to incorporate that in my skill set. The other half of this was ADA compliance. So ADA compliance is pretty much accessibility for your websites for you know people who have vision problems or hearing problems or what have you. Uh, like if they can't see the images, they'll get the alt tag that you put in for the images, things like that. My knowledge on ADA compliance is very sketch. <laughs> so I'm not going to go into too much detail about it here. I still need to sharpen up what all entails ADA compliance. There's a few different websites that check ADA compliance that you can run it through and kind of fix. And that's what I do right now for the websites that I've built. But I want to know beforehand, you know, what... ADA compliance consists of so I can build with that in mind from the start, you know what I mean? And save myself time and again, deliver a better product because that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Fourth thing I want to learn this year, this is another tool, 
but it's like the useful APIs. A lot of people want address validation on their websites, especially if they're selling a product. A lot of people want things like MailChimp on their site to collect data, or collect emails and be able to market like that. A lot of people want social media integrations on their web pages. And again, I'm not looking to master these individual things. I just want to know them well enough to be able to implement them on a web page if somebody wants, because there are things that, again, people want. Also, I want to know more of what's out there. Like, I didn't know things like Smarty Streets existed. I didn't know how addresses were validated. I didn't know what MailChimp was. There was just all these little things, all these little useful APIs that are out there that I just didn't know about or didn't know how to integrate on a website. And they're things that people want. Fifth thing that I'm going to be learning this year is Tailwind. Now, Tailwind is a CSS framework, a lot like Bootstrap, that comes built in with CSS classes that allow you to do certain things. And the benefit of using a CSS framework is that you don't have to write any or much CSS, right? You can just look at the HTML and see what everything is doing. It's easier for people to read and it's easier for you to scan through and know what's going on instead of having an ambiguity that comes along with CSS classes sometimes. So in my experience with Bootstrap, it's something I actually have to use with my job. It can be limited sometimes in what you can do. Tailwind seems to have more freedom, which is always better. So I'm pretty excited to give Tailwind a go. All right, and because you guys made it this far in this video, I'm gonna throw in a bonus for you guys. The sixth thing I'm gonna be learning this year is Gulp. Now, Gulp is a task runner. Task runners allow you to automate simple tasks, right? They're redundant things. To give you guys an example, uh, was it last month? I actually started playing around with Gulp and I figured out you can compress all the images in a folder with Gulp. So instead of going to a website and putting in 20 at a time and compressing them, you can compress every single image in a folder at once with one task. And if you wanna convert them to WebP, you can even do that. So I'm still dabbling with Gulp, but I'm really looking for any excuse to use it that I can, <laughs> right? Anything that can be automated this year will be automated this year because time is valuable and I love to save it. So this year is all about increasing my value as a developer and offering a better service, right? Because at the end of the day, as a web developer, you're offering a service, your skills as a service, right? And I personally believe that these six things will go a long way in the overall package that I'm presenting that is myself. Now, I know these things that I'm learning might not be as exotic as some of the stuff that other people are learning out there in the universe, but I've only been in the game for a little over a year and I really do think that these things can increase my personal value. So I'm gonna double down on them this year. And like I said, that's the goal, increase my personal value. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys are interested in joining an awesome coding community that's growing by the day, do feel free to join my Discord. I'll have a link to that down below. If you guys wanna support me, do subscribe to the channel, check out the links below, follow me over there, and I'll see you guys in the next one, all right? Peace.